Life's full of ups and downs, but sometimes it's nice to just kick back and talk about fountain pens. Yep. Welcome to FPGeeks.com. And now for your fountain pen enthusiast hosts, here's Dan and Eric. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks Podcast, episode number 16 for Tuesday, March 13th. We are recording live on Monday, March 12th, 2012. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio. This is Eric. And this is Dan. And how are you this evening? I am doing really good. How about I'm yourself? I'm doing great. Hey, how's the weather in Iowa? Uh, it is fabulous today. So it must it be snowing. Was... <laughs> no, this is a different form of fabulous. <laughs> um, over the weekend and today, it's been like 65. So fabulous because that's warm and sunny? Yeah. I mean, it's like t-shirt weather, man. Yeah, you're in a t-shirt. Hey, you went to some yeah. sort of concert or, or what do they call it? It's not a concert. What'd you do last night? Uh, we went to a ventriloquist. Uh, really? We went to Jeff Dunham. Yeah. So uh, you've never heard of him? Uh, no, I thought he was a comedian, but I guess he's a comedian with a little dummy. Uh, with like six little six dummies. Six little dummies all at the same time. I hope not. Oh. No, <laughs> but he did do a bit at the very end where he was doing three at the same time. Three at the same time. Were you one of them? Yeah. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> but no, one of them was actually controlling a miniature doll of himself. Now that's funny. So he has a ventriloquist was, with a ventriloquist doll that is that is using a ventriloquist doll. Yeah, I mean, it was it was really cool. Well, wow. good laughs. Oh, yeah, and he went for like almost two and a half hours. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe it. Got your money's worth there. Anybody, Definitely. anybody, uh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to keep stepping on you because we have this little delay here. So uh, if people hear that in the live broadcast, I'm so sorry. I'm not really stepping on Dan uh, when, he's, when he's speaking. It's that he, I hear the end of his sentence long before you do. So I'm sorry. I'm going to try better. I mean, I'm putting in my own little delay manually. <laughs> okay. Dan, is anybody in chat? Uh, yeah, we got a couple guests in there right so now. say hi to everybody. Oh, hi, everybody. I guess they can hear me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what, what have we got at iTunes? Well, we are now up to 38 ratings 38. for our main podcast. And uh, we, we've got some new comments, too. And this one guy, his name is Exploding Tofu. Exploding and to I, I freaking <laughs> love that. The, he, he left, a, I guess he left a comment if, if we got his name and not just a rating. What was the comment? Do you know? He did. Uh, yeah. He says, uh, amazing podcast. The only problem is I end up spending money after every show. Uh, and uh, <laughs> That is why we exist, isn't it? S sorry about that. <laughs> Exploding tofu. But uh, when we got another really good one from Ronald, he says uh, he, he's a newbie to fountain pen collecting. Um, he really likes our podcast and our website because it's it's very noob friendly and he doesn't get the impression that we ever talk down to newcomers. And that's really good to hear because that's certainly not what we oh, want to no. do. In fact, I pretty much consider myself still a newcomer. I'm a geek, but I'm still a newcomer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we've only been in it for a few years yeah. and I would, I mean, yeah, we're we're definitely novices. And you know, since, since uh, I'm sorry, were you finished with your iTunes report? Uh, we, we got a couple other comments um, just, you know, saying uh, great job. They enjoy the podcast. And uh, so we, we thank everyone for rating and leaving a comment. Okay. Uh, since we brought up the subject of being new to Fountain Pens, I, I think it's a good time to mention the Goulet's, the Goulet's website, gouletpens.com. Yeah. Uh, I go there so often I don't actually type it in, but it is gouletpens.com, isn't it? If it isn't... I think it, so. Uh, is a Goulet in the chat room? They can correct me. Or actually, you could probably provide uh, yeah. the link. <laughs> Um, they have uh, created a new. Uh, let me pull it up so I don't just you know. Block oh, them it's the, their it's whole knowledge um, base of yes uh, of information on fountain pens, and it's very very friendly to noobs, especially to people new to the to the hobby. And I like it because it's it's easy to navigate too. Like it's it's not confusing. You know, you're not like going through an obstacle course to get this information. I mean, they've, they've laid it out really well. Yes, it's, they call it the Fountain of Knowledge, and there's oh, yeah. a section called Fountain Pen 101. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial on using a fountain pen for the first time. They even have a glossary of terms. Sometimes we use little abbreviations and acronyms that aren't familiar to everybody, and we just think everybody knows them because we use them all the time. So, uh, yeah, uh, gouletpens.com, Fountain of Knowledge. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. That was off script. Let me find my script again. Yeah, I really can't wait until that starts to build a little bit, and they get they get some really good info in there. I mean, not that they don't already, but uh. it's it's quite a bit of information already. But I don't know if anything would ever be complete. Oh yeah, I don't no, think it could right? be. It's, that would be impossible. 
so so uh there was a, a pin show this past weekend wasn't there was there? and a matter of as a matter of fact we got a phone call mike called to let us know that he went to the pen show we're talking about the long island pen show correct right and that was uh march 10th and 11. Right, he called to say he just got back from the Long Island Pen Show. He wanted to thank us profusely for doing Geek of the Week with Susan Worth because that made him specifically see her at her table, uh, where he apparently spent quite a bit of time, which, as you and I both know, is not difficult to do with Susan Worth. Um, no, not at and all. And he walked away with a Schaefer oblique italic of some sort. He didn't specify what, but it's a Schaefer oblique italic, and he was very happy with it, and he met a whole bunch of other fountain pen geeks while he was there, which is, of course, what happens at a pen show. <laughs> nice. Um, and then we've got the Eastern Pin Show in the UK coming up uh, March 25th. Uh, the Arkansas Pin and Watch Show coming up March 30th through April 1st. And then a big one, the 17th Annual Atlanta Pin Show is April 13th through the 15th. Now, have you been to their website, Eric? Uh, I was there last week to grab some dates, uh, but I don't remember anything about it. So put me on the spot. What did I miss? I just looked tonight. They are giving away a Delta Momo and a Conway Stewart Rick Rill Lolly. A lolly. Ooh, you know, yeah, I, that, I don't know which one of those pens I'd want more. <laughs> I could care less, I, just as long as I get either one. Wow. I mean, the, the Conway Stewart is a $1,500 pen, and they're just going to give it away. Now, uh, why, why isn't Atlanta on our list? Uh, don't know. It could be on the list. I don't know if we'd make it, but we could certainly put it on the list. <laughs> hey, were they giving away pens at the LA Pen Show? I don't. Re I, I don't, don't recall. This. I didn't see anything. No, I don't either. But if, wow, yeah. I, well, you know, there's lots of people going to the LA Pen Show. Maybe they don't have to give away pens, but Atlanta. You know, it might be cheaper to just buy one of those pens instead of going to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably be about the same. I mean, honestly, but that's, those are nice giveaways. Nice giveaways. Yeah, and. So I was checking out their website. I, I didn't see any seminars or, or featured guests or anything like that. Um, I do believe a weekend pass is only like 25 bucks. So Cool. Now, at the LA Pen Show, we saw both of those pens that they're giving away. Not the actual ones they're probably going to give away, but we saw a Momo and we saw right. a, a Lolly. And yeah, you're right. Either one of those pens would be just really at home in my collection. So uh, speaking of your collection... Yes. Um, you've, you've got a little bit of ink in there, right? Got some ink. It's right over my shoulder here. Our, our latest poll asked, what was your favorite ink? Um, uh, what did yes. you answer? I answered um, Hiroshizuku. Ah, same for me. That actually ended up being the second most popular at 15% uh, of the votes. Do you know which was the most popular? Every time I looked, it was Noodler. So I, yeah. Yep, every <laughs> time. And, I, you know, it, it didn't really surprise me. I, I was hoping... Hiroshizuku would close the gap a little bit, but it, it just never did. I mean, it always was at least 10% behind. Why do you think that is? Because I have a theory, but I'll ask well, you first. I, I think because Noodlers offers so many different types of inks and colors and at a really good price. I think it's, yes, the price has to have a lot to do with it. The Hiroshizukus are just, uh, you know, compared to other inks, they're very expensive. Well, yeah, I mean, you could get three different noodlers for one bottle of Hiroshizuku. And, I mean, it's it's good ink. It's great ink, but I don't think it's $30 ink. No, it's $30. It's $30 bottle is what it is. You know, you know how I feel <laughs> about that bottle. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, third place was uh, Diamine at 13%. So. Right now. And I'm, I think the next closest was like 6% or something, and I can't remember what it was. I think noodlers might have even gone higher. Uh, didn't John the Monkey write in and tell us that it's very difficult to find in the U.K., noodlers? I, yeah, he did. So it, it might even be more popular if if the UK is kind of stuck with only buying the the diamine and because apparently they can't get noodlers very easily. Well, I wonder if that's like a import export like tax issue or like a distributor problem. I wonder I wonder why they're not widely available in the UK. I'm sure now that we've mentioned it, uh, John the monkey might theorize and let us know. Yeah, definitely. John, please do that. Stop by the forums or, or, or leave a comment somewhere and let us know what you think. Send us an email. Whatever. Yeah, because I, I'm pretty sure Noodlers would have done a little bit better. I mean, uh, Diamine got a certain percentage of the vote that it might have gone to Noodlers had Noodlers been available in the UK. And I don't know that it's not available. It just might be difficult to get over. They're kind of like, right. well, I was going to say kind of like Diamine. 
diamine or diamine, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, it's I don't a little know. difficult to find here, but it is absolutely available here. Yeah, well, we we talked about the next poll question. Yeah, that's going to go live, let's see, probably tomorrow at 10 a.m. And the new question is going to be, what material do you prefer a pen to be made from? And so thinking about this just for a few minutes, I came up with ebonite, acrylic, celluloid, um, metal, and precious metals as well, and, and I suppose plastics and, and other stuff. But uh, could you think of anything to add to that list? Um. I don't know. You want to call urushi a, a material, or I, I would call that a coating. Okay. Uh, then no, I can't, because I've got urushi right. on the brain. <laughs> um, do, do you have a preferred pen material? Preferred. I'm gonna have to go with acrylic off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I think I would either go with celluloid or ebonite. Um, celluloid has a very interesting smell, and I, for some reason, I, I like that. I don't Many know why. Do. And so I, I really like that. And a lot of you know vintage pens are made from celluloid, but I also really like uh, ebonite because that, I mean, it's just has a good touch. It's 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 warm feeling. It's, it's another great material. I you know honestly could care less which one it was, just as long as it's those two. One or the other for you. <laughs> we gonna let people answer more than one in this poll? Yeah, if we have that option to set it up that way, we sure can. We do. Um, we'll have to discuss that. So maybe maybe, maybe right. the question would have to change. Like, what are your two top favorites or something like that? All and right. then we can see where that goes. So speaking of Arushi and, and that being on your mind, um, that you interviewed Ernest Shen this week. Did it? Well, actually, that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> or yes, I'm sorry. That's right. Last week, but my my time's off because we're not recording on our know, usual night. Yes, uh, uh, it was uh, last week was the interview. It was supposed to hit the uh, the website on Friday. Didn't make it till Saturday. But yes, I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with Ernest, and he spent quite he shared quite a bit of information with me. Yeah, it was a, a really uh, technical, a lot of very informative interview. I enjoyed it, you know, talking to him. Uh, I got the same vibe from him in person as I did from that interview. I just, I thought it was a, a great show. Right, exactly who he is in person is who he was on the phone. Because You've met him too. We had dinner yep. with him <clears throat> at the LA Pen Show. And that was a great time. Uh, we didn't talk too much about uh, Urushi or actually pens at dinner. We were too busy having our margaritas. You didn't have a margarita, <laughs> did you? No, I no, didn't. you had a beer or something. Some, some sort of... No, egg. I think I stuck to Coke. Did you? Oh. Yeah. You and the wife. That's yeah, because you were the designated walkers. <laughs> <laughs> you had to lead us back to the hotel, which was, you know, what? Across the street. Yeah. Um, so are, are we going to have... Uh, are you going to let us in on who the next Geek of the Week is? Uh, ordinarily, I don't. Uh, but this time, I'd love to if I knew. But I don't know yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> What's new at the so, website, Mr. Smith? Well, we, we had some, some big news drop the last few days. Um, we'll, we'll start with the earliest. D did you know Nikaya applies Mac.ie to their converters? Uh, you know, I had seen them somewhere, and I'm guessing I saw them uh, at uh, John Modishaw's table at the LA Pen Show. Um, but if you had asked me that prior to the story hitting our website, I don't think I could have said, oh, yes, of course they do. I, I didn't pay much attention to it. but it, I've never seen them. I, I, th I saw these at uh, John Modishaw's website, uh, nibs.com. They're only 25 bucks each, and they're beautiful. Yeah, but you need a Nakaya to go with them. Uh, or a platinum. <laughs> or a platinum. I mean, because it's actually a platinum converter. Okay, so you're going to put that in your platinum. I, you know, I'd put it in anything that fits, actually, what, what but I, only as long as it was a demonstrator, because I don't want to cover it up. I was going to say, you, you, you're going to put that in a pen and cover it up, but at least you'll know it's there. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I would, you know. They'd probably show take, it off sometimes. Take barrel yeah, off. To your and, fountain yeah, pen friends. Stare at. Yeah, that's pretty geeky. I, I think we all need that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool. I, You know, I'm surprised I didn't see those at his table in L.A. Well, you know. His table is rather long. Half the table has pens and quite a few pens, and the other half is him doing nib work. And you just kind of yeah. gravitated toward him doing nib work because it's so fun to watch, and there's a crowd around him. So to be honest, I didn't look at a lot of pens on his table because, of course, I was waiting in line to see him personally about a pen, uh, uh, some nib work. Uh, 
So that may have been why you missed it, because every time you go by his table, you're, you're watching him. Yeah, and he does have a huge selection of pens there. My goodness. He certainly does. And at his website. And, and just call them. <laughs> They're the friendliest people in the world. You just call them. They are. <laughs> we that one time we called and just wanted to ask him a simple question, and you were on the phone with them for like forty minutes. Yeah, it's the way it is with them. They're they're, they're fountain pen geeks from way back. <laughs> um, so did did you happen to see this uh, vintage tray of Waterman pens? Uh, you're talking about the ones that go pens. GoPens.com? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, Gary awesome. Lear's website. Every, He's got some of the most astonishing fountain pens I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's, I go to his website just to look at pens. It's just, you'll, you'll oh. always learn something about pens when you go to his website. And you don't even have to look at the prices. All the good ones are sold or, or way too expensive. There are, there are some things to buy there, of course. Uh, but just to learn about pens, he's got such an assortment all the time, and all of his back issues of his catalogs are still there, too. Not all of them, but he keeps approximately five online at any given time. So you want to know about a pen, go see if he's got it in one of his catalogs, and you can read a little bit about it and see a picture of a nice example of it. It's where I did a lot of learning and still do a lot of learning about fountain pens, vintage fountain pens. Well, you know, when I see his email... Um, about the new catalog <laughs> release. I mean, I get excited. I mean, I, I drop everything I, I'm doing and I go look at the, these new, well, the new batch of vintage pins for sale. And like with this one, this was uh, one of the first sets um, in the catalog. It was pins 20 through 29 and they're all vintage Waterman safeties. And he's only got about nine, eight or nine pins in this tray and I did a, a quick calculation. There's over fifteen thousand dollars of pens in this tray. That's basically what his catalog looks like. <laughs> and I mean, it's just unreal. And these pens are in immaculate condition. Oh I yes, mean, I, I've never seen anything that isn't on oh. his website. In fact, I think that's uh, a prerequisite of something uh, appearing in his catalog. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the one that caught my eye was the pen number twenty-eight. Uh, which, of course, is, I think, the only non-safety pen in that tray. <laughs> it is. <laughs> why Why did that one catch your eye? I don't know. Um, it just is the one that first caught my eye. I think it's because it's the plainest, perhaps. Uh, oh, really? But I, I saw it and I thought, oh, that's a cool safety. And then I saw a big lever on the side. Well, that's an interesting lever on a safety pen. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, but they're they're definitely really cool. We saw some of those uh, safeties. Nothing quite this extravagant, though, um, at L.A. And they're very cool pens. I would love to add one to my collection someday. Someday I'm going to have a safety pen. Well, you know, we can harken back to that eBay find uh, that Julie, a.k.a. Okami, oh, made goodness. off of your, uh, I'm sorry, Sunday, Sunday Shopper. shopper. Yeah. That, that was a beautiful pen, beautiful pen. <laughs> Um, speaking of pins that we've seen at LA, Conway Stewart has announced the release of their Marlboro Vintage. Um, my goodness, is this pen gorgeous? It is gorgeous. Do you remember standing at her at, at Mary's table with uh, with our camera, uh, filming this as Mary explained it? And I was asking, oh, wait a minute, it has the section in the same uh, material. It's got a, a lever or a lever, as she called it. It, it is. A huge pen, a gorgeous pen, and I even said I believe in the video. This is a pen I have to have, and now it's available. I yes, I this is th the first Conway Stewart I'd actually buy, and um, I'm I'm seriously seriously considering it. Um, I've been wrestling with the decision for a couple weeks now, but uh, they're they're making it in in four different colors, all from Ebonite, and they're limited to. I, I believe it was 300 pieces of each color. And you can get it as a lever filler, an eyedropper, or a cartridge converter. Right. So that's just, I mean, you can get, that's got to please everybody, I think. I mean, it always oh, yeah. is not a piston filler, but one of those three things will please just about everybody. Uh, and I, will, I would want the lever filler. Actually, I would I, I would call this a lever filler just because that's how it was introduced <laughs> to me. <laughs> I Yeah. Okay. I would agree with that. And I'd probably want... I would probably want. Yeah, I can't decide. It's either the black one or the red and black one. And I'd oh, really? Probably go with the red and black one. The, yeah, I think I don't. I don't know if that was the the rose ripple or the wood grain. I can't figure out which one is which. I I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'd have to go back and review the video we took at the LA Pen Show. 
because that is yeah, the one that we had we in do. the camera, the one I touched. Um, yeah. What's the MSRP on this? Uh, Seven hundred dollars. It, it's not impossible to get this pen. Well, and and it's not. It's not crazy Conway Stewart pricing like some of their limited editions are. Right. Um, you know, some of them you see they're they're easily over a grand, and it's like, oh, I, I'll never be able to get that. I mean, even if I sell half my collection, I'm not going to be able to buy that. Well, speaking of pens that you're not going to buy, the, the Carbon Fiber Limited Edition Conway Stewart was at the LA Pen Show. You held it in your hands. I think it, it was... I did. I think it was zero or man. zero, zero, and you passed it, it, on it. It was <laughs> double zero. That Mary, man, she's a salesman. I, She's terrible. but <laughs> she's, she's so good, she's terrible. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Do, what, do you buy this pen or do you go to the Chicago Pen Show? Do you buy this pen or do you go to the Chicago, Chicago Pen Show? I'm sure I can pull off both. Oh, well, I want to see that sales receipt. And you better hurry because they're limited edition. <laughs> oh, man, I know. I, I need to get a hold yeah, of Mary. They might be gone already. They might be gone already. You know how Conway oh, don't, Stewart don't does that. that. They announce limited editions and boom, they're gone in 15 minutes. And this was yeah. an owner's edition, uh, the owner's club, wasn't it? Um, at, at the, first? the carbon, f oh, the carbon, the carbon fiber, fiber was. was the collector's club collector's special club. edition. Collector's yeah, this is just this is available to everyone. And you know what? I, I have to research this because I don't know it. Uh, the, the name Marlboro was is apparently the family name of Winston Churchill. Uh, but I don't yes. know how that plays in. Was that his mother's name or I don't know the history of that I don't either. And I, I suppose I should before I buy the pen. Um, one cool thing, though, is that if if this is a little too expensive for you they're going to be making another marble out of resin and that's going to be available later this year hopefully at a bit of a discount at, and the, the same size i i believe same size same dimensions same options um, with a lever yeah I, well i don't know for certain okay. but but i would hope so i want the limited okay. edition well of course <laughs> I, I, you gotta have that the ebonite okay Leaving Conway Stewart. What else you got? Well, Lammy, you know, we, we did a little reporting on some, some new stuff, possibly about the 2000, but a brand new pin completely is this Lammy Scala, which I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's S-C-A-L-A. -A. I would say Scala. But, uh, did, did you see my post on this? Oh, yes. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I posted a picture of um, the, the Lammy... <laughs> Studio mm -hmm. plus, um, oh, which one is that? Uh, you know, I don't know that which one that is off the top of my head. Oh, I'm I'm totally blanking right now. But I, I put the these logo, two the pins. logo. That's right, the Lamy logo. Those two pins together clearly equals this new scholar. Right. So it's they put these they put crazy. these two pins in an enclosure together, and out came the the scala. Yeah, it's. Uh, there, there's not been a, a whole lot of you know news about this. Um, apparently, it's available for purchase in the UK. I think it's like eighty euros, I believe, which isn't exactly cheap. No. But uh, what what do you think of the look of this? Pen? It's not I mean, for me. It... I can see that it would appeal to a lot of people, but it's not. It's not for me. It's a, it's, it's going to be too thin, and just not going to be something I'm going to have. How's that? Yeah. How's that for, you know, a straight answer? <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't impress me all that much. Um, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm always excited to see new stuff that comes from Lamy. So am I, but I'm spoiled by, by you know, the, like the Lamy 2000. Oh, of course. For me, they're going to have to improve on that, and they may have, but we'll probably get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will get to that in a minute. But before we do... Uh, just want to let everybody know that that Omos 360 Red Demonstrator um, that we talked about a, a week or so ago is now available for pre-order from nibs.com. So that's uh, John Mottershaw. Cla that's Classic John Fountain Mottershaw. Pens, I believe it's called, but it, everybody knows it as nibs.com. Right. Pre-order. Pre-order. Do we know a prize? Is it, is it um, $750? It's, well, that's, that's the retail. Um, John, he, he wants you to call him okay. to get his price. And you should definitely do, do that it. because... Even if um, you don't buy the pen after the end of the conversation, you're going to spend 30 good minutes with John Monoshaw or somebody at nibs.com. Oh, yeah. You, you'll at least walk away with a good conversation. Yes, absolutely. Now, you're not buying that one. 
No, it, no, I would, I would hold off. You want the white for, one? Um, yeah, definitely the white one. Uh, or the Conway but, uh, Stewart. Y- you know, it's <laughs> yeah, the Conway Stewart. Um, it, John has all the cool pens, it seems, because not only does he have this, you know, red demo three hundred and sixty, but he has this Nakaya Piccolo titanium, and it's it's solid titanium. Um, ha- what, what do you think of this pen? Boy, you're just going to ask me that on everything, aren't you? It's gorgeous. Well, of it's course. gorgeous. It's a very nice uh, solid metal pen. Uh, titanium is beautiful. Uh, the way they're presenting it with the uh, the clip and the nib plated in, help me with the word? Uh, ruthenium. Ruthenium. It's beautiful. Uh, but it's a Nakaya Piccolo, and I'm used to seeing those with Urushi, so it sort of jostles my brain a little bit. To see. Why are they doing this? I I don't actually know why, other than it's freaking awesome. Oh, that's true. So is this? One, are you gonna buy this one? <laughs> no, because I I was expecting this pen to be you know pretty pricey, but uh, I I wasn't expecting it to be almost eleven hundred dollars. Right. Well, that's including the the plated clip and the plated nib. Correct. Gorgeous. Now Piccolo isn't the biggest pen in the world either. No, it's not. Um, the the titanium does, however, increase the weight. Um, almost two times. It, it comes in at 60 grams, and I believe um, the the hard rubber, the ebonite one with the Arushi coating is only like 28 grams. Well, I guess it it should increase the weight being solid metal. Uh, it's it's a nice pen, and I can't wait to see. You know, John, the, the one and only time that we were in Chicago, uh, John Monashaw was there too. I hope he has one of these, because if nothing else, I want to fondle it. Oh, yeah. Um I, I also talked about, you know, there's 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 several titanium pins out there. Um, the Parker T1 comes to mind. Um, Omos has done some stuff with titanium. I, they've, they've made a, a Paragon and a 360, I know for sure, in titanium. And then also Grayson Ty is probably the most prominent for me with, you know, who works with titanium. And I couldn't really think of anything else. Um, do you know of anyone else or any other pens made from titanium? No, and I'll tell you, I'm not a huge fan of all-metal pens, except for, of course, my vintage wall all-metal pen. But uh, on on our new poll question about uh, what's your favorite material for a pen to be made out of, if I had to rate them all, metal would be at the bottom for me. I, I don't pay a lot of attention to them. I think they're cool to look at, but I, I don't I don't much care for holding them as I write. We we did get a comment on that post that said uh, Chris Thompson makes titanium pens of uh, he makes replicas of the the Parker Dual Fold Senior, so that that would be interesting. Would I be. haven't had time to check that, that out. Would be very but, interesting. What kind of metal did it say? Uh, he well he uses several different oh. metals, but titanium is is one of them. Well, I understand titanium is very difficult to work with. It is. It's really hard on the tools to work. Okay. They don't. You don't get the li- same life out of them, so they're expensive. And if you don't use the right technique, you can you can break tools. And yeah, it's it's very hard to work with. Hmm. So that adds to the is titanium is is a precious metal. Is it expensive? I I don't know if I'd call it a precious metal, like say gold or silver, but uh, but because it, I think it's more expensive than than many others. So it's a little costly, but also adding to the cost is the fact that it's difficult to work with. Correct. Okay. Well, I'm glad I'm not addicted to it because, you know, that would just <laughs> hurt my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of something that, that would help your pocket out, yes. Franklin Kristoff was holding a contest and they were giving away a $75 gift card to anything on their website. And didn't and, I see a comment come through that said, from the winner? Yeah, he was at our website. He posted <laughs> that he won. Uh, the, the contest was about their new Model 27 um, Collegia. Is that how you say that? Uh, I would say Collegia, but that doesn't mean I'm right. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a cool pin. We saw this in L.A. They released several new colors, and they wanted people to guess which color would sell the most in a two-week time period. And uh, we got the results back last week. The the all black chrome ended up selling the most at twenty four percent, and then followed closely by by the perfectly red and the racing green. Um, but as far as the guesses f- from people that submitted, black chrome was the most popular. It, it got 
thirty-two percent of the votes, and then the Carolina Blue was the next popular. And and I, I really liked the blue, but I figured the black would be would be more popular, and that's what I voted for. But I didn't submit. You know, I wasn't going to try and win this. And no, I didn't enter either. Uh, but I would have. I would have gone for the black because that just appealed to me the most. It's it's a pretty cool looking pin. Um, the the person who won it was Ed J. He said he he chose to get this pen and I believe an additional nib with his seventy five dollar gift card. Fantastic. So yeah, I would say he he used that wisely. And it was, what model was it that you got at the Alley Pen Show? Twenty five. I got the yes, I got the model twenty five. And you're still loving it, I imagine. Yeah, it's I'm very very happy with it, especially that nib. Oh. <laughs> Mike Masayama makes grinds great nibs, but it's not it's not satisfying you so much that you can turn away from the Conway Stewart. Well, you know now they've got their own <laughs> custom ground nibs too that I'm sure I'd be very happy with. <laughs> there's, in other words, there's no end. Oh, of course not. <laughs> You've been in this long enough to know that. What else you got? Um, another little update on the Lamy Two Thousand. Um, oh, now see, this is a pen that I have to have. I, oh, I, absolutely. I'm not happy with the price, uh, but I have to have it. It's just I, ha I will sell lots of pens to get this pen. Well, the really cool thing is we, we heard it was coming supposedly in July, um, but now we know for sure because they've put it in their 2012 online catalog for everyone to see. So you you can go check it out. It's called the Lamy 2000M. It uh, is a brushed, you know, stainless steel matte finish. It's got a close up of the section. There's there's no ink window clearly, and we, we knew that from the previous picture. And it still doesn't look like it has those tabs that hold the cap on. Right. And when I say this is a pen I have to have, it it's the caveat is that those tabs have to be gone. Otherwise, I'm perfectly happy with my current Lamy 2000. Yeah, I could I could really care less about the tabs or the ink window. It's a new Lamy 2000. I'm gonna <laughs> buy it regardless. <laughs> but uh, it's it's I, I'm very curious about this pen though because even in the picture of the Lamy 2000, the regular edition, they they don't show the tabs on that one either. So I don't know if they're photoshopping it out to make the pen look cleaner. That would not be or, nice of them. No, it wouldn't. Um, it actually, I'd, I'd be a little upset with that. Well, I think we should find out. We'll start with Philofax, and if we can't get an answer there, because I think we asked and they didn't know. Well, somebody didn't know. I I asked, and they basically told me what I already knew. It was coming out this summer. But we, did, didn't you <laughs> and, and that's ask, all they you had. asked specifically about the tabs, and they had no information about that, right? Right. So we're going to have to write to Germany. We'll, we'll have to try and... You speak a little German, don't you? I'll take care of it. I will find right. out and we will report back here one way or the other. Fan fantastic. Um, and we got some huge news from Twisby this week. Yes. Unfortunately, not great news. Well, it, was, but it was what? Uh, sweet and sour? <laughs> I don't know. Good and bad? <laughs> uh, I, I would, yeah, I, I like that, sweet and sour. I mean. Why don't, why don't you talk us through that a little bit? Oh, well, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Twisby, the VAC 700 uh, was supposed to be here by now, and it's been delayed by at least a couple of months. should be out now uh, early May. But um, as a consolation prize, the Micarta will be released in a couple of weeks here. Uh, the bad news about that is that there won't be too many of them. You're going to have to sit at your computer so you can get one. Uh, but we don't know the day it'll be available. And yeah. I think, uh, Rachel told us that there are so few that they won't be going to the retailers that Twisby will sell them themselves, probably through their Amazon Correct. site or through Amazon. Uh, so that's where you're going to have to, if you want one of these first edition, we'll call it that, first edition Micartas. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. Um, you have to find it on 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 Amazon. And I, I'm living at Amazon right now because you never know when they're going to release them. Yeah, I've I've checked a couple other places for updates, you know, just to make sure I wasn't going to miss it. But uh, I I think there's only as of right now there's less than a thousand Macartas made. I don't know if they're going to launch their first batch with that, um, but that's how many are made right now. Um, you you will be able to get it with or without a clip. I'm I would bet money that you're getting one without a clip. You're talking to me. 
<laughs> Who else am I talking to? Uh, yes, if I have a choice, I'll get one without a clip. But they probably have so many made already with clips and so many without. So uh, I, I'm going to take whatever I can get. Hopefully, it'll be without a clip. Did you? Did you? I was about to ask you if you saw the pictures at the post. You posted the post. Of course, you saw the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's one picture that shows a new Micarta. Uh, next to a Micarta that has been in use for some time. Yeah, I guess that's probably Speedy's Micarta. Yeah, um, that's his. The new one looks a little longer in the picture. Both the cat. Yes, his. Okay. the sh- The short one is his, and it is one of ten made that short. Okay. Um, we we will not be getting that version, that short version. He just wanted to show what it would look like after um, some time of use. I see. And then, and I think it looks much better than the brand new pen. Well, why is that? Um, I mean, probably, it looks different, but what what makes it different? You, it, mechanical I'm engineer, guess you tell me. Mostly f- from the oils from your hand, and also just kind of you know general dust and dirt. You, actually, on old Lamy two thousands, you'll you'll notice the same sort of same sort of thing. They'll get a little patina on them, is what it's called. And it, it gives it um, kind of a, a glossy, smooth, smoother finish okay. where you hold it more. So that's the answer to the question is that this uh, this material, which is called um, Micarta. Micarta, is the material's name too, actually mm-hmm. does get a patina. I Yeah, okay. I would think so. I mean, because I'm, I'm guessing it's the raw material machined down and then polished. I'd... I haven't seen anything that they're going to be coating it with any kind of protective, I don't know, lacquer or just any finish. So I, I think it's probably going to be raw micarta. And well, that's cool. And I don't personally care whether it's polished or not polished or comes out in a week or four weeks. I'm going to get one of these. I've, yeah, I, I'll definitely be I, getting at least one. I'm a Twisby fanboy. It's much worse than any of the fanboys for Apple, I tell you. <laughs> But the, um, uh, there's also a couple of different, well, I don't know if it's a color option. There's color variation. Yeah, it's, and this was something that they didn't quite expect. Um, after they machine the pen down, they get either a, a light or a dark material from the Micarta. And they're doing two combinations. Um, it'll be a light cap with a dark grip and a light barrel or a light cap with a dark grip and a dark barrel. And, you know, honestly, I could really care less which one I get as long as I get one. Yeah, I feel the same way. And that's really strange because I don't usually feel that way about pens. I really want what I want. But I guess I just want one of these. Uh, I haven't seen one in real life. Maybe I'll change my mind after I do see one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do, I'm sure there are plenty of other people that would <laughs> happily take it off your hands. Oh, I probably would never give it up. It would just stay in my collection. <laughs> um, so some of the other news that Twisby released was the reason for the delay of the VAC 700. Um, now, now, you did talk about this a little bit in a previous post. Um, they had to and change the injection molding location on the grip section. Um, but I think a, a bigger part is that is they're, they're redesigning designing it a little bit to uh, combine some pieces instead of having two or three separate pieces put together, they're going to make it all one unit to help resist cracking a little bit. All right, now the information I received was that they have to move uh, the injection point. Is that what you call it? Yeah, well, um, it's called uh, the gateway, I think. Okay, they have to move that injection point, that gateway, whatever it is, for a part of the pen. I was not told it was the grip or the section. Okay. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, maybe that is the truth. Uh, maybe you got it from somewhere else. Well, I, I got this information from their Facebook okay. page. Um, and yeah, I, I, sh- I guess I just assumed that the, the molding issue was with the, the grip section. Um, it, it may have been somewhere else. I, I know they have changed it on the diamond 540 before. So yeah, I, I just kind of made that assumption. It, it may not be a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't specify with me uh, where they're, where the, which part has to have that change made, but they did say that it is a part of the pen. Okay. And uh, and they're also making some changes to the Diamond 540, and I was completely unaware of this. 
they're um, changing uh, uh, the clip a little bit and also the piston filling unit. And you have details on that? I do. They're, they're adding a couple facets to the clip and they're, they're making it slightly longer so that, let's see, how do, how do I describe this? Um, it goes up a little closer to the top of the pen, right? Yeah, it, it's closer to the crown of the, the cap. Right, it doesn't go down further toward the cap band. Correct. I don't think it could. Um, well, I mean, I'm looking at mine right now. There's no room down there, so it must be it's, going It's a up. very subtle change. I I was trying to look at this without reading, you know, what changes they had made, and I didn't even notice the clip. I noticed, noticed the piston filler because that, that big metal piece where the piston unit threads into in the barrel is is missing. They've now integrated those threads into the barrel itself and um, I noticed that right away but I, I didn't notice the clip until I, I read this it this new clip has facets or yeah I like my old clip do you yeah it's smooth you know how I am with clips <laughs> yeah, yeah there's no one more picky about clips than you but uh I you know one thing I, I posed in the the article was whether or not they would change the name to the Diamond 550. Because if you remember, this was originally the 530. They improved the piston, made some changes, and they called it the 540. So I'm curious if they're going to bump it up to the 550. I wonder how many changes they have to make before they will you know, change the version number. I think you know removing that metal from the, the piston unit uh, is a major change, at least you know from my non-mechanical engineer standpoint. Yeah, it's it's pretty significant, and I mean the, the clip change. I mean it's it looks different. They they changed a little bit of the molding process to r reduce the total number of pieces in the pen. I mean it's significant changes. I I would be surprised and and a little disappointed if they didn't change it to the five fifty. I hope they do. Or as somebody commented at the site, if they keep the name five forty, we can call our old ones old style. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I've had it two months. It's already old style. And so our showstopper of the week, showstopper by the far. Week. Let me catch up is, with you. Is, is your post the? Oh no, seven, the seven secrets. Six. <laughs> yes. Now you've got to talk us through this because I I loved every bit of this. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, it's post that I posted. <laughs> that uh, is supposed to help you add, save money or, or make money so that you can afford to buy more fountain pens. This, this, some of these ideas might help you, Mr. Smith, with your, with your Conway <laughs> Stewart and uh, whatever else uh, you're buying this week. Um, one I think that was the most controversial or was cancel your internet. Because first of all, I say right in there, I'm not saying stop surfing the internet and, and certainly don't stop visiting Fountain Pen Geeks. Just stop paying for your own internet. Use your internet at work or get internet from your neighbor. There's really no reason for you to shell out 30 to $50 a month for your internet. Now, to this, someone I think responded that you should probably cancel your cable instead of your internet. And, you know, from my standpoint, you should already have canceled your cable years ago. <laughs> I haven't paid for. I don't actually. I don't think I've ever paid for cable. Yeah, cable should be gone. And if you're still watching TV, wow! Look at the look behind you, Mister Smith. <laughs> if you're still watching TV, <laughs> you're you're really wasting precious time that you could be spending with your fountain pens. So Absolutely. I just didn't think anybody was still watching TV because you know I don't watch TV and I assume everybody does what I do. So now <laughs> TV is out, but you spend way too much time on the internet. If you need the internet borrow it use it at work uh, and we you know you do need a cell phone because how could we live without text agree. messages so sometimes most cell phones have a little bit of connection you could probably get away without any that was my thinking anyway you could get away with canceling your internet and then, <laughs> do you want me to go through each one of them i won't spend that uh, much time on you i just have to pick, stop pick some of your stop favorites doing so much laundry in other words you know use things more than once <laughs> Place your pants and skirts in the freezer overnight <laughs> after each use, and you'll likely never need to clean them again. That's true. You've done that. You've gone to college. Um, <laughs> Possible annual effect plus one Mont Blanc 46 from the used market. Yeah, yeah. Each, each and one of these ideas that's what had a little I really loved about effect. this. Go ahead. Like you, your savings 
you you put what pin you could actually buy with the savings. I thought that was freaking awesome. Yeah, I did like this one. It, it gave me the chuckles as it was flowing out of me. Um, I think probably the one, the, the most popular one was the idea number seven, which was to take up drinking. <laughs> That that could backfire though. Hey, yeah, but you don't care anymore because you're a drinker. <laughs> you got all the pens. You're not paying your bills. It doesn't matter. It, 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 everything changes when you take up drinking. Obviously, all of this is just in jest. Um, yes. And I'm I'm hoping that was clear to everybody. Some of the comments were probably also in jest, uh, but it was difficult to tell if they were maybe taking me seriously. But no, obviously <laughs> this was all just fun, fun and games. Um, oh, so much fun and, indeed. You know, I enjoyed it. So I'm. Well, thank you for making that show, the showstopper this week. <laughs> oh, it was incredible. I don't know how it couldn't be. I'll have to... And like I say in the article, many of these ideas work for me and add to my fountain pen kitty. So, so <laughs> I'm, I'm three sheets to the wind right now. <laughs> uh, well, we, we, we've had a little bit of activity at the forums lately. Um, we had a great one by Fountain Pen Kid who actually attended the Long Island Pin Show. Oh, right, and I believe he went with his dad. He, he created a post called Vinny Vidi Vacfil, and he kind of describes his, his trip there. Um, he got to speak with Richard Bender. Um, his, he said his dad spent quite a bit of time at Susan Worth's table. Um, Doesn't everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Absolutely. And so, did he buy? Did he buy something? Did he buy a vac of some kind? Um, I let's see. Yes, he got a, a vintage Schaefer set. Um, like still in the box. I don't. I don't think it was stickered, but it was in like excellent condition. And I think he had. Oh, he talked to Ron Zorn about getting it restored. Oh, uh, yeah. So he he had a great show. Um, oh, see that's and there was also. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> That's one of the things I really like about pen shows is that you find a pen that you like on this table and you buy it and you walk down to Ron Zorn or to Pendleton Brown or to John Modishaw. Someone's there who can help you immediately with this pen. Uh, whereas ordinarily, if you buy something on eBay, you have to wait for it to get to you and then you have to decide what you're going to do with it. Is it working fine? No, it needs something. Okay, who am I going to send it to? Pen shows are one-stop shopping and you know, I just love them. So I just thought I'd mention yeah. that. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Where were you going? No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, well, actually, we got a question in the chat. Um, Do we have an audience? Mr. <laughs> yeah. M Mr. Troopy wants to know what's in your mug. It's water. H2O. <laughs> oh, just water? <laughs> I'm not really three sheets to the... I'm not really three sheets to the... <laughs> <laughs> well, back to the forums. We, we, we did have another uh, interesting post that I thought would spark a good conversation. Um Peter would like to know what's the big deal with Flex. Yeah, what is the big deal with Flex? I mean, come on, people. Aren't oh. we over this already? <laughs> over it? What are you talking about? Um, I'm just trying to wind you up, Mr. Smith. <laughs> yeah, well, you're good because you know I, I like Flex. Um, yeah, but why? That's what he wants to know. What's the big deal with Flex? Apparently, Peter has never used Flex. That's what I would guess. Well, it's It's just so much fun. I mean... It's like driving so, a sports car as compared to your VW Bug? Or? Well, I don't know about that, but it's just like, so we use stub nibs and, and cursive italic nibs because it, it changes your writing style, right? Yes, for some line variation. Yeah. Well, throw in flex and that just magnifies it. Yes, exactly. I mean, you, you get, you know, the extra fine or, or whatever the, the, line width of your nib is and then it, it flexes to two or three times that that's what i like it for because it's fun it's fun to you know i don't use flex every day and i don't usually use flex if i'm actually sitting down to write someone a letter but if i'm just sitting down to please myself as i write with a fountain pen i like a flex nib because it's just fun yeah it's they're great fun and um experiencing the different kinds of flex is is what I really like because um, while while vintage flex is certainly different than modern, I mean there's there's also different variations within vintage flex. I mean you just get a different feel with different pins, and I, I especially noticed that between the the several vintage Aurora eighty eights I have and the Parker Vacumatics that I have. 
Right, and you know, while I'm thinking about it, um, I, I, I don't draw very well. I am not much of a drawer uh, or a doodler, actually. Sorry, John the Monkey. Um, so if I can use a flex pen when I... It, I can write in cursive. That's the one thing I really learned how to do. So if I'm using a flex pen, it makes me kind of feel artistic as I'm playing with different line widths. That's as close to being an artist as I'm ever going to get. So that, you know, just makes me happy. Yeah, I, I don't say I use it very much for art, but uh, they, they certainly do make me happy as well. Yeah, No, I never use them for art. I just use them to, to play with my cursive writing style to see what kind of different strokes I can put on different kinds of letters to see what they turn into. And they don't usually turn into much, but at least I had fun doing it. Meditative. Uh, I'm trying to... So, okay, I'll let you talk now. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was uh, just kind of chatting with, with the folks in oh, chat Oh, tell me who's in there, because you know I'm not in, I'm not in chat. You're kind of well, leading the way we on got, that. We got uh, Rachel Goulet is Rachel, in there. Rachel, how are you? Um, we, we got a few other guests. I don't recognize their usernames. Um, but like I said, Mr. Troopy was in there. Uh, we have Mont Blanc, La Lique. I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. <laughs> Uh, we got Sky High. Um, so, yeah, we got several people in there chatting. Cool. Tell them to stick around. Oh, they can hear me. Stick around because we're about to have a contest that will only take place in the chat room. Oh, yeah. You got to be live to win. Yeah, so. Live to win. Speaking Everyone of... Everyone listening to this later, that's, that's a reason to come oh, and join yes. us live. When we announce it. Now, let's talk about that. Last week, we did this on Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And I believe I promised everyone that we would be doing it live at 5 p.m. Pacific from now on. That changed within one week uh, because of schedule problem. And that was my fault. Challenges. Well, you, you had something to do. I was overworked. Um, so here we are today on Monday at 6 p.m. And uh, you've got something that blocks your Sunday next week, too. So we might as well just, shall we say, next Monday at 6 p.m.? Yeah, we can do that. And then from then on, we'll try Sundays at 5 p.m. But we can also, if anybody wants to send us emails or just let us know what works best for them, you know, how many people are in chat? Uh, 15,000? 15,000 people? Got, maybe they can come to a consensus and tell us when they want to have us on the air? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can definitely do that. We'll, you know, we'll start up a post either in the forums or on the front page or something. Maybe, maybe we should have a poll. But uh, we'll, we'll do something to get feedback from everyone to let us know what, what a good night would be. Yeah, because I would like to do it when uh, people have the opportunity opportunity to actually be in chat with us. So um, Rachel says, the later the better for us on the East Coast. Uh, Mr. Troopy says, I don't care, Sunday is fine, but now apparently is too. <laughs> um, we got Sky High that says 5 p.m. ish tends to work well. So yeah, I mean it's it's going to be a little different for everyone, but uh, we want to try and get as many people to be able to watch as as possible. Okay, well I think for right now, and this will be announced at the website sometime during the week, and maybe 30 minutes before broadcast. We're thinking next broadcast will also be Monday 6 p.m. Pacific, which is now 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Right. So let's let's talk about some fun stuff. Yeah. Like speaking of giveaways, yeah, we finally have a winner for our Twisby Vac Seven Hundred that unfortunately won't be able to get the pin for another month or two. No, but uh, it was Laura. Laura uh, stepped forward via email to claim the prize, and we'll send that to Laura uh, as soon as we can get our hands on one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, Laura, I, I want to apologize. I, I've kind of been. Uh, dangling you along for a little bit uh we we didn't let her she responded to us she contacted us like she was supposed to um unfortunately both eric and i have been so busy these last this last week that we we just haven't had a chance to respond um you know taking care of posts at the website and eric's been busy with business um we're, we're very sorry about that we didn't mean to be mean but uh congratulations um hopefully that the, the pen will be worth it so the pen will be worth it <laughs> I know that already. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, so, we wanted to give away some ink. Um, yeah, Gold well, let's Spot, give away something on the show. Goldspot sent us a bottle of uh, J. Urban Gris Noir. Mr. Smith, can you tell me what Gris Noir means? Um, Don't look in the chat green, room. Because green fun? <laughs> I, I have no idea. It's Gris as in G-R-I-S. Rachel's oh. telling you, isn't she? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> but, oh, gray. Ah, uh, gray what? Gris noir. Uh, cloud gray. Yes. Or gray cloud. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Goldspot sent this to us so that we could give it away. So let's give it away. Now, we had, we said we we're going to ask a question. Um, and the first person in chat to answer it can win this ink. Um, I don't think we should exclude anyone. Uh, so, Rachel, put your put your hands on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you want to read the question? Yeah, absolutely. So, what year was the Lamy Two Thousand introduced? Uh, drum roll. Is anybody going to answer that quickly, or do they have to do research? Hint, hint. You can find it at well, fpgeeks.com. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> if you read our awesome review, you would know. Anybody answer yet? Uh, we got a couple. We got 2000. Oh, that's uh, a good guess, isn't it? 1993. 2000 guess. is a good guess, but incorrect. 1993 is also incorrect. Keep it coming. 1992. Nope. Or does that say. I've got like a little red. 1962. I'm sorry. Um, no, it is not 1962, but you're close. Oh, we're getting hints now. Well, that's all I'll get. Sorry. <laughs> Rachel hasn't won yet? Oh, there we go. 1966. Who won that? Pinky Spring. All right. Now, that, that nickname uh, rings bell. Are we sending this to, to Germany? Uh, well, I don't know. Wherever he's at, we'll send it. Uh, you should be listening to me. Are we getting a result? Yep. S sending sending it to, it to Germany. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he says not worth it. Oh, come on. Of course it's worth it. I think it's a she. Uh, I think it's a she. I don't know. Oh, I'm, well, I'm sorry about that. I don't know. But I think so. Absolutely, totally worth it. You want this, this Gris Noir. You're reading the chat room. Okay, I'll put on a one-man show. <laughs> no, it's, it's Pinky's a guy. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll contact you or or you contact it, contact us, and uh, we'll get a hold of your address. We'll get all the shipping logistics figured out and get that sent to you. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Um and since you're in Germany, maybe you can give Lamy a call and find out what the scoop is on the, the, the Lamy 2000M. Does it have tabs to hold the cap or does it not? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, you know, when this Lamy 2000 was made, it was uh, featured on our website this week in our awesome review. It was indeed. And it's still sitting here on my desk. There it is. No, I know. I, I can't wait it. to get that sent back. There it is. This one's not yours, Mr. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to send it back to me to get it ground. Oh, I do? Oh, I guess I could do that, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's a lovely pen, isn't it? Now, I had a problem oh, with it. Oh, my goodness. I had a problem with this pen. Yes, uh, which I was very surprised because it's the exact same pen that I used. Right. And Do you remember what ink you had in it? Oh. I'm, I'm looking. I... I don't. I can't remember which ink I had in it. Okay, I put an uh, Hiroshizuku ink in it, and I had quite a few, quite a, quite a number of problems with hard starts and hesitations. Not hard starts. I can't say hard starts. Hesitations. You know, when you're writing and you stop a word, and before you, by the time you get to the next word, it doesn't want to write. So I, I just can't blame the pen for that. I'm blaming the way I hold it because it's a double broad nib. Well, although I did, I tried my best to hold it all kinds of different ways and pay lots of attention to the way I was doing it. But I knew the whole time I was using the very same pen that you were using for your review, and you didn't have this problem with it. No, and I, I don't know why. But uh, I don't, well, I don't know why I had that problem. Probably the reason why you had it is there may be a slight baby's bottom to it because it is a double broad nib. It is incredibly smooth. And that is one way to make a nib so smooth, is to, to give it a, a slight baby's bottom. But that, that line between too much and, and just enough is very, very fine. Um, and, and when you do go overboard, you'll, you'll run into that exact issue that you have. Yeah, it's too much for me. Now, I did find that it didn't, it didn't have that problem as much if I just printed with it. Hmm. And it is a very wide nib. Yeah, it's, it was huge. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to get that thing stubbed. Um, it's going to be unbelievable. But uh, I was I was impressed with the, the entire pen as much as I was the nib. I mean, it's it's great. I think it got 
the second highest geeked factor that we've reviewed so far with an 8.4. I think that is the second. I can't recall off the top of my head who it might have been the Delta Dolce Vita. Yeah, I think that was the other one. But uh, which is in a completely different uh, class, price wise. Right. Right, because this the MSRP on this is is one ninety five uh, street price of one fifty six, and the Delta whoa the the retail was like what six or seven hundred yeah. on that, so yeah big big difference. But man, this the Lamy two thousand, this is the pen that I recommend to anyone looking for a pen that can spend a hundred dollars or more. And as I said in the review, even if you're going to spend a thousand dollars or more. I'm going to recommend this pen. Yeah, it's because a wonderful it's pen. It's just awesome. And it's a work of art. It really is a work. I mean, it's, it's a reason that a pen comes out in 1966 and nearly 50 years later hasn't changed and is still being talked about, still popular, still getting geek scores of 8.4. <laughs> and it's not a vintage pen. Or, or are we calling it a vintage pen because it came out in 1966? <laughs> it's a, a vintage pen you can buy. It's, it's, it's what, new old stock? No, it's just new stock. That uh, I don't even know what we'd call it. It's, it's amazing. That's what we're it's, calling was it. Was there anything in the review that we uh, disagreed on? Something we can argue about on, on you know, live television? Um, well, let's see. Our dealer prep scores were very similar. Uh, filler up was very similar. Um, I had a, seemingly a better test drive. That that must have been that, when that you the only experience. problem I had was the the hesitation. Um, well, the the nib. We had a little difference on the nib. Um, mm -hmm. I gave it an eight point seven five, and and you gave it a seven point seven five. But you're you're not a big fan of semi hooded nibs, right? I'm not a, a big fan of hooded or semi hooded nibs, uh, but. Uh, because I was, was a Lamy, I might have given it a little bit of a... Uh, uh, one of the small disappointments with this pen was that the nib is not uh, changeable on the fly like it is with like the Safari and the, and the All-Star. Now, I know most nibs aren't changeable on the fly, but with Lamy, I'm kind of used to it now. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> sure. They, they spoiled yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and and plus my my I know we're talking about the same nib, but I could not get this nib to perform for me, and and I do know how to write with a double broad nib. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I really don't think it was you. I mean, it's just. But but then again, I can't explain why I didn't experience that. So, um, it could it could have been paper, it could have been ink, could have been you know several different things. Well, I, su I assume we both used uh, rhodia paper. Yep, I did. And so maybe it was the ink. Before I send it back to you for a little grinding, I'll probably try a different ink in it. All right, we'll have to do that. But other than that, I mean, this is a pen I really could. If I could find the right frame for this, I would have this on my wall, framed on my wall. <laughs> so um, one thing I've got to ask you. <gasps> on live television? <laughs> on live television. On, oh, on Fountain, Fountain Pen, Fountain pen Radio. Radio. What did you think of the clip? You're, oh. Will you be disappointed if I say I like it? Well, no, I just want to know. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of clips. <laughs> I know that. Part. And we've had a run of lots of pens recently uh, with clips that I kind of like and some that I really like. This this clip is perfect for this pen. I would absolutely agree. It, it, it's just, it's the perfect shape. It's the perfect material because it's the, the brush stainless. Uh, it... it uh, uh, it offsets or whatever you call it from the black fiberglass. It is the perfect clip for this pen. And this is a pen you have to take with you. you know, some pens you don't take places, and this is a let's go out and see the world type of pen. And as such, it really needs a clip. And this is, I, I could not design a better clip, even in my head, in my imagination, for this pen. So, does that yeah, answer I have, your question? I, it does. <laughs> And yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't know how you could improve on the clip. It's just it's gorgeous. The design, of, the design of this pin is just so perfect. I love it. Way I, I don't know. Does it look modern to you, or does it look retro? Um, it. I think it looks modern. And I every time I, I read that it was made in 1966, I'm like, oh, that's right. You know, I, I keep thinking it was only made a few years ago. It it just looks like it is so modern. So. I think that's incredible, incredible design that it, you can't really tell whether it's retro or modern because it could be either. Uh, it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, Everyone needs one of these. 
Yeah, and I, I'm really excited about that new 2000 that comes out. I, I know we've talked well, about it a little bit. As long as it doesn't have the I tabs. Because the tabs just, you know, get on my nerves. I know just, why they're there. I know it. Look at the, the stainless steel section and imagine the whole pen that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be so be wonderful. wonderful. See, you don't know as I am looking at the pen right now. That's going to be beautiful. But the, the tabs, <laughs> I, I would like it to have, be, have no tabs but still have the ink window. That's, that would be my perfect pen. Yeah, I you know it, either one of them doesn't bother me. I mean, they could release it exactly like the Lamy Two Thousand is now, but just in stainless steel, and I'd still buy oh, it, and I'd still be some happy. Spray paint? <laughs> no, oh, shall I paint it no, before I send it to dare. you? <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I will be knocking on your door to return that one, sir. But uh, any questions from? Uh, oh, I was I was about to say the peanut gallery, but they can hear me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're we're getting close to wrapping up the show. So if you guys have any questions for us, uh, p please let us know, and we'll do our best to to answer them. Um, uh, some Pinky's brain said, "I just read that the new version's price increase is partly due to the platinum finish of the nib." Um, it <coughs> maybe a little. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing it's no. probably more due to the pen being made of of solid stainless steel. Um, I'm assuming manufacturing costs are going to go up a little bit because of that. But also, they're probably trying to market it as one of their premium pens, um, sort of like in the, the Dialogue 3, because that is now a street price of 300 And I don't know, maybe, Rachel, you can help me out on what the retail of that is, but I believe it's like uh, 460 or something retail. I can't remember. I don't know. The Goulet's uh, are usually 20%. Uh, below MSRP. Oh, she's saying it's only three seventy five for retail. On the what? On the two thousand M? Uh, on the Dialogue three. Oh, the Di Dialogue three, minus. So, but that's not what they're selling it for. No, they're selling it for three hundred. Right. So if if the two thousand M is also three seventy five MSRP. Well, we don't quite know for sure. Oh, we don't know for sure. But we're just talking about why the price increase oh, is, is so much higher. Oh, because they want to increase their profits. That's why. Oh, because they realize that the pin is just so freaking awesome and people are going to pay whatever they ask. Absolutely. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of cost increase in manufacturing, but they certainly could have absorbed that. Uh, no, they're trying to make more profit. And who can blame them? I mean, with a pin like that, it's, it's, it's understandable. It's, it's, uh, you price your pens whatever the market will bear, right? Yeah. And we, we've got another person asking, what's a good fat pin? The Safari is too slim uh, in the grip. The Twisby 540 is almost there. Any advice? Um, yeah, a good fat pin, the Levenger Plumster. Um, I've had one for a long time. I will see if I can find it a little. Right. An Ahab. An Ahab is a really nice fat pen. Oh, yes. It's a $25 pin, and it's one of the largest is I've it, ever is seen. Is it even $25? Why do I want uh, to say it's twenty bucks? I'm looking at your site, Rachel. Actually, because I think you're right, and it is twenty bucks. But, uh, the Ahab, twenty dollar, twenty dollar fat pen, and it's not a cartridge converter. This is a good pen. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, I, I can't find my I, Levenger Plumster. It's a Levenger. But, uh, Levenger, no, no, no. You go noodlers. It's <laughs> Eric. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a good pin for a Levenger. It's um it's fat, it's it's heavy, it's got a good feel to it, and actually filled with uh Noodler's Heart of Darkness, it's it's one of my top five pins. Um that's interesting. I've never met a Levenger pen that I would consider heavy, but I don't know that I've played with your uh, did you call it a plumster? Yes. And you think it's a heavy pen? It's pretty heavy. So one, we'll one of the things I don't it. care for about Leven, Levenger, I don't know if it's Levenger or Levenger pens, is they seem so f feather light to me that I, I uh, it's as if nothing's in my hand. I don't care for it too much. Yeah, this one's definitely not feather oh, okay. light. Anyway, there's two opinions. I say go noodlers. What's that plumster go for? Approximately, you remember? Well, it's now they're they're not making that oh, anymore. Okay. Um, so you'd have to get it. I got mine on, I believe, eBay, and it was only like thirty-five or forty bucks. Okay, so not a huge price difference, but no flex. No, of course not. What's the filling system? 
Partridge Converter. All right, go noodlers. Noodlers all the way. <laughs> Get two of them. <laughs> Anybody else? Or are we wrapping things up? Um, it, it looks like the the chat is is having a nice conversation oh, with they? themselves. Okay. That's good. Yep. Then I will just. Uh, oh, I have to thank Ernest Shin for being our geek of the week last week. Absolutely, and it's such a pleasure talking to that guy and, and listening to um, his work with Arushi. It's actually inspiring. Did you? He. I don't know if you got that far into the interview yet, uh, Dan. Uh, but we actually make a pen together, an Arushi pen. We get we yeah, get the ebonite pen from from Edison Pen Company, and we apply a very simple uh, Arushi treatment to it uh, before we move on to making more complicated pens. Uh, it really makes me want to try it. Of course, I'm not going to try it <laughs> <laughs> unless I find myself in some Arushi studio somewhere that already has everything set up, and I just want to you know, play a little bit. I really don't have that kind of patience. Uh, to create something i have the patience oh, to wait while some master does it for me i just don't have the patience to do it myself so but it was fun to do it in a conversation you know all in theory um we we do have one thing uh that rachel's talking about that i think we should mention she's saying the vanishing point um prices are going to go up uh retail is going to be 175 and they are going to have them for 140 I believe, or is that's the current price, right? We have to think uh, about people who aren't watching us, who are going to listen to this live. Uh, the vanishing point. Hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I I saw that. I I didn't catch it all. Okay. Um. Well, I'm at but, the the Goulet's website. Their price right now for Vanishing Point is uh, one thirty two eighty, or one hundred and forty for that matte black one. Uh, so she's saying it's going up a, a few dollars. Yeah, I guess so. Did she say when? Um, no, I didn't see that. We will definitely have to be in touch with her though, and and get all the details so that we can let everyone know. Yeah, and we'll keep an eye on their communique and retweet it when we see it. In the meantime, let me remind everybody how they can reach us. Uh, we are available via email at podcast at fbgeeks.com. You can call us, 415-685-GEEK. That's 415-685-4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com, fbgeeks. Put the slash in there, please. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, facebook.com slash fbgeeks. We have a website, fbgeeks.com. We have a forum, fbgeeks.com slash forum. And you can send us letters if you like. Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California, 92346. And I'll let you say your goodbyes, Mr. Smith, as I try to find where we're moving to next. Okay, I think I've got it. We can wrap this up anytime you're ready. I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching on such late notice. Yeah, that uh, was fun. Now, I do apologize as for that. soon as this is over, I will uh, grab the video recording that is happening on my computer and I'll upload it to YouTube and then I'll post that YouTube video at our site so that people can watch commercial free. After, the, awesome. after that, I'll pull the audio and make that the podcast that will be published tomorrow at 10 a.m. <laughs> and and we just got asked, are you sure you're recording? Uh, if you had ignored that question, we could, they wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, uh, no, live. It says live and recording. Who asked that question? That's somebody who knows me well. <laughs> of course right, we're everyone. recording. Brian Gray's not here to mess us up. Uh, oh, got nice. All right. So I'm going to say we'll goodnight. We'll see you next week. And I have to move to this. We at fpgeeks.com would like you to know that it takes us 12 cups of coffee to wake up. Thanks for listening. But the fun doesn't have to end here, as the site is constantly brewing with new info. On behalf of Eric, Dan, and the whole production team, I'm Miguel. Good night.